Tim. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack a gob, it is time for the only news that matters, and there aren't many rock singers left that can still match the tone of Paul McCartney, both as a member of the Beatles and in his solo outfits. McCartney has been able to warp his voice into different sonic shapes depending on what the song calls for. And uh, going from the balladeer crooner to the piercing screams at a moment's notice. Although he may be known as a virtuoso behind the mic, McCartney thought one Beatles classic didn't feature his best singing. Before the Beatles even got a proper record in stores, though, McCartney was already a bit wary about his voice. When talking about recording the first ever single, Love Me Do, McCartney remembered being mortified about singing the song title alone, admitting that his voice was pretty shaky on the final take they used. It didn't take long for McCartney to start branching out with his voice, though. Compared to the little Richard screams that he, he could hit whenever the band played live, McCartney was looking to expand his horizons uh, whenever he walked into the studio. Admitting that he first impressed himself the minute he wrote the song, And I Love Her. While most of the group's early career was uh, dictated by John Lennon, McCartney wanted to take his music into more extravagant territories. Although he may have been the first band member to get in touch with the avant-garde scene, McCartney also found ways to add sophisticated touches to the band's sound, including the first use of strings on a Beatles release with the song Yesterday. Despite being embarrassed by the song's soft approach, uh, McCartney would spend the rest of the band's career honing his craft as a ballad writer, although he would end up playing guitar to provide an anchor for yesterday. Eleanor Rigby from Revolver was the first time none of the Beatles played any instruments on the track, driven by McCartney's lead vocals and the rest of the band adding harmonies beneath them. Compared to what he would get up in his solo career, though, McCartney thought that the final take they used uh, didn't showcase his best singing. When hearing the playback, McCartney claimed to be mortified by his performance, saying, I remember not liking the vocals on Eleanor Rigby, thinking I hadn't nailed it. I uh, listened to it now, and it's very good. But it's a bit annoying when you do Eleanor Rigby and you're not happy with it. When uh, put up against thousands of other McCartney vocal performance, though, his voice on this ballad is dramatically understated, serving as an onlooker on this woman's life as she picked up rice at the church. Even though this kind of vocal delivery could come off as plotting, in the wrong hands, McCartney played the song exactly how it should be. Instead of making impressive vocal runs on making dramatic breaks in the music, McCartney added a deal of sympathy to all the lonely people of the world who live their lives with no one by their side. McCartney may not have been happy hearing the song playback, but when talking about the loneliness and emotional, emotional suffering, it's better to treat the subject with reverence than a platform for vocal acrobatics. Um, I got to say, I'm, I'm completely shocked. Uh, I can't believe that he didn't like the way he sing, sang Eleanor Rigby. I don't think he could have sang it better. Uh, McCartney's got this really pop-friendly voice, but... Yeah, he can get heavy, like, you know, uh, of course, Helter Skelter and a few other, you know, he screams his ass off on Old Darling. Um, but, man, Eleanor Rigby, he's not happy with the vocals on Eleanor Rigby. 
is kind of mind blowing because I think the vocal delivery on that song matches perfectly with the classical music going on behind it. I mean, I can see John Lennon say it's lame because John Lennon hated a lot of the Beatles songs, especially McCartney's songs. But Paul having a problem with Eleanor Rigby is uh, kind of mind blowing. And something else, uh, thinking back in retrospect, is pretty mind-blowing is that Kurt Cobain was a huge fan of the Beatles. And I read this interview not too long ago of him talking about the Beatles and him talking about how much he despised Paul McCartney. He said he hated Paul McCartney and he was a John Lennon fan. He loved the Beatles, but he didn't like Paul McCartney. And another weird thing is like, in that interview, he said his favorite Beatles album was with the Beatles, which, hey, don't get me wrong, I love that early Beatles stuff. Most people like the trippier stuff. You know, my favorite's Rubber Soul, but, you know, I love every album from Please Please Me to um, Abbey Road. Well, Let It Be is the last release. But um, what's really uh, freaky about it is that after he dies, Nirvana reunites with Paul McCartney, <laughs> which I don't know if uh, he would have liked that, you know, but who knows, maybe him and John Lennon were looking down and goofing on Nirvana with uh, Paul McCartney, but I love Paul McCartney and I love John Lennon in the Beatles. I would say he's probably my favorite Beatle in the Beatles. I was not too crazy about his solo career. I thought some of it was okay, but nothing mind-blowing. Honestly, I think the greatest thing, the last greatest thing that John Lennon has done was his stuff on, on uh, the White Album. Now, yes, I love Come Together, She's So Heavy. Uh, you know, what was on Let It Be, the two of us, he sang with um, McCartney, uh, Across the Universe. All those songs are good or great, because it's John Lennon in the Beatles, but I still don't think it's as good as like, I'm so tired, Glass Onion, Cry Baby Cry, all those songs on the, the White Album, I think was just John hit his peak, because everything after that, including his solo work, just couldn't match everything he did on that White Album and before. You know, I mean, the greatest Beatles song ever, in my opinion, is Day in a Life. My second favorite would be In My Life, you know, and, and these are John Lennon songs, though I did love Paul McCartney a lot in The Beatles, uh, but John Lennon was my favorite, but as far as uh, the solo career goes, Wings, and also Ram, and the uh, first McCartney album with the, with the little berries. I absolutely love McCartney in the 70s. Uh, I think he excelled. He was awesome in the Beatles, and I think the wing stuff, a lot of that stuff was just as good. I wouldn't say better, but just as good. Letting Go, Ben on the Run, Junior's Farm. My God, there's so many great, great songs. Mulberry, what was the name of that song from Ram? Mulberry something was awesome. and no, I just love the hell out of McCartney. Not a Harrison fan, sorry to say. Even though I did like a lot of his songs. I even liked Don't Bother Me. One of his first ones. I love Chains. And I thought his best work ever was on Abbey Road. Something and Here Comes the Sun. I thought was the best George Harrison. Not a fan of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Even the acoustic version, not a fan. But... I love Piggies, Tax Man, but no, none of that Indian stuff, with or without you, or whatever it's called in those songs on Magical Mystery Tour. To me, they're putrid. I prefer Ringo. But there you go. That's uh, pretty mind-blowing, huh? Paul McCartney thinks that uh, he didn't do a good job on Eleanor Rigby. I don't think he can do it better. But you never know. Hey, John Lennon said he could do Oh Darling better than Paul McCartney. And that, I got to say, I can't hear. Because Paul McCartney screamed his ass off on that song. And I love it. I love that song. 
And I love all of you that are watching right now. Thank you so much for watching The Only News That Matters. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And tell me what you think in the comments below about the Beatles, McCartney, Eleanor Rigby, what have you. And who's your favorite Beatle? And who had the best solo career? Sure wasn't George Harrison, according to me. All things must pass these nuts. And like this video. It's good for the YouTube aneurysms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. Mm-hmm. <laughs>